It's time for us to start a new chapter, open a new part of this course unit. It's called uh, the vector calculus. Well, calculus means that we are calculating something, understanding something. And this time we'll be understanding how things are changing in high dimensions. It's an extremely practical and it has applications in, in virtually every area of science and engineering. If you want to describe flow of liquid, if you want to describe temperature, diffusion, and more relevant to many of you, electromagnetic processes, for example, the wave propagations and modeling antennas, the vector calculus is a must-have tool. And just to give a few examples from the famous Maxwell's equations, which we will learn towards the end of this part, the Gauss law, um, which describes electric fields, and the uh, Ampere's circuitry law will need vector calculus. And ultimately, that's about differentiating and integrating in high dimensions. So you just extend what you learned for one variable, such as time, to uh, many variables. Before we move on, I will briefly remind you about the basic concepts of the vectors, which you should have learned from the very first part of the engineering mathematics. Uh, last year. So we have normally two types of quantities, scalar quantities and vector quantities. Scalar quantities have only magnitude, while vector quantities have both magnitude and direction. And about the notation. A common notation is to use a bold font for the vector quantities Alternatively, you can do underline, or else you can write it like that, if you um, handwrite. Or you can use the uh, arrow above the letter, but this is less common in, in modern notation. And about the magnitude, you take the absolute value, of your vector, and this sometimes denoted by just using the non-bold version of this symbol. You probably remember that the vector can be represented uh, using its components, but for that you need to understand what is the coordinate system. So this is a Cartesian coordinate system, which has two principal directions and corresponding unit vectors i and j, which denote the direction in the x and y, respectively. And likewise, in three dimensions, you have three unit vectors, which point in the direction of x, y, and z, respectively. And why it is useful is because we can represent a vector as a set of its components. So you can write as a sum, or you can write as just a set of coordinates. In 2D it will be two coordinates, in 3D it will be three coordinates. And then you can define two types of products between the vectors. The one shown here are called the scalar product. And why is it called a scalar? It's because the result of it will be a scalar. So you take two vectors and you get a number as a result, and it will depend on the angle between the two vectors and also on their uh, magnitudes. And the coordinate system is very useful for computing the scalar product because you take two vectors in the coordinate form and you multiply their components and sum them up, and you get the uh, scalar product. 
And likewise in 3D you take a sum of the products of the components. Another type of the product is a vector product. This time you take two vectors and you get a new vector. And again, it will depend on the angle between the vectors and their magnitudes. But we'll get not just a number, but we also will get a direction. So it's magnitude and the direction. And for that we need to use the right-hand rule, which will define the orientation, the direction of that uh, vector. So if you have a vector and you rotate it towards another vector, then according to the right-hand rule, you will get the vector product between these two vectors. And again, the coordinate form is a very good way to compute a vector product. For that, most recommended and most easy to use way is to use the uh, determinant form where you take a matrix. The first row is the unit directions, the i, k, uh, j, k. The second is the coordinates of the uh, first vector, the second vector, and then you use the standard rule for determinants, which you hopefully remember from A levels and, and it was reminded uh, last year, uh, to compute uh, the vector product. And the vector product is a fundamentally three-dimensional operation. So you always have a vector which is orthogonal to both vectors which produced it. So you have the u, v, and the vector product will be orthogonal to both of them. And if you are somewhat uncomfortable with the basic vector properties which I just reminded you, do not worry, there are plenty of materials available on Blackboard, such as the Helm workbooks. Um, you can you know, get the links uh, in the content and also in the uh, course information section. You're very welcome to ask any questions about that or other areas of, you know, of, of course materials on Piazza. So please do so. And also on Piazza resources, there's an other link to that. But if you don't ask questions, I assume that you know and familiar with the notation of the vectors. And one thing I want to highlight now is that it's important that if you write the vector as a sum of its component, you have to use the i, j, k. Do not forget them, because often the common mistake is that people omit this notation and they just write as b1 plus b2 plus b3, which is wrong because it's a scalar. So if you write it this way, write this together with i, j, k. And if you then want to use the uh, other form, you can use b1, b2, b3 and put them in the brackets. But use one or the other, don't mix them. Okay, so it's time for really a new uh, material, for new stuff. Let's talk about fields. So what is a field? Previously we talked about a scalar, just a value, a number, or a vector, which is a, a vector at a given point. But a scalar is a set of values, or as we'll see later, a set of vectors. So the scalar field is a field, is a set of values at given points. So each point say a coordinate in 3D or in 2D has an associated value to it and the whole set, the whole collection of these points will be the scalar field. It sounds a bit dry but actually it is uh, very practical. Think of temperature. So temperature is an example of a scalar field. So it, you, you can measure temperature you know, where you are watching this video in your room and at every point, you know, x, y, z, it will have some value, and that will be represented by a scalar field. Or you can think of a pressure, which hopefully doesn't vary much you know, in, within the 
uh, space of a room, but it will vary a lot uh, in the scale of the planet. And again, it is a scalar field. Or if you want to measure a concentration, so you want to know how a particular chemical diffuses, and then it's again described by the scalar field of concentration. Or, as we'll learn slightly later uh, in this part, the electric potential is another example of the scalar field. But enough about scalar fields. There is a, a totally new concept, which is a vector field. A vector field is a, not just set of values at a given point, but also a set of directions as well as values at every point. So to every point of space, be it 2D or 3D, you associate a particular vector. And there can be slightly different vectors in different points. Let's look at the example. Think of you want to predict the flow of a liquid. Then at every point you will have the velocity and this velocity will be described by the vector field because it will be slightly different at different uh, portions of this fluid. Or you can measure a gravitational field, one of the fundamental forces on Earth, and it's again another vector field. Or, of course, you know, most relevant is electric fields and magnetic fields, which we will learn and uh, the fundamental equations at the end of this part. What we can do with these fields? Well, we can differentiate them. But this requires a bit of a care. So please you know, focus here, because it's really important what you apply to these fields and what you get as a result. And in this course, we will consider three differential operators. One is called the gradient, another is called the divergence, and the final one is called the curl. And what I want you to pay attention here is that the gradient is applied to the scalar field, the divergence and the curl to the vector fields. And their result will also be different. But again, one thing at a time, we will start discussing these operators as we move along and we'll spend most of this week discussing the gradient and then we'll start uh, thinking about divergence and uh, curl.